before we officially start, I just want to explain a few things to everyone in the audience. So right now the event is being recorded to three different cameras and it is being also YouTube live streamed. And we have one presenter who is joining us via Zoom. And then we will be using multiple software during the presentations. So there is a myriad of media technologies going on and different software device presentation is going on. So we will be switching back and forth on from uh, in presentation, from Zoom presentation as well. So when we have multiple technology playing together, sometimes things don't work as we expected. So when something like that happens, so just be patience with, uh, with us as we figure out how to fix those issues. So with that, uh, within one minute, uh, we will get uh, the event started. Thank you. Uh, so good evening, everyone. I just want to welcome you to this uh, sixth annual, can you believe it, six years, uh, sixth annual uh, Big Reveal event on behalf of the whole team, uh, the Florida Data Science for Social Good team. We want to welcome you. Uh, this year, we were able to do this event in person. Um, the last two years, we've been doing it uh, virtually uh, through uh, Zoom. And so we're really glad that you could be here. We also have people joining us um, through uh, YouTube Live, and so we welcome you all as well. Uh, my name is Dan Richard. Uh, I'm one of the co-directors of this program, and I'm going to turn things over to Karthik so he can. Thank you. And uh, my name is Dr. Karthik Mapati. I go by Karthik. I'm an associate professor in UNF School of Computing and one of the co-directors for this program. So we do have a, our two adversary board members, who are both of them are in here, and you guys will be hearing from them soon. We are Ari from Jacksonville Jaguar and Matt from NLP Logic. When 2016, when Dan and I were talking about whether or not we should form this uh, program, so Ari and Matt were one of the two first people we went and discussed uh, with them about doing this uh, kind of program. As a board member, their essential duties are helping us to ensure we are scoping the project right, picking the right project, and pairing the intents appropriately so that the projects will be successful. They also help us find if, uh, finding the sponsorship, funding sources, and different type of opportunities that we need uh, to be uh, successful. Right. So again, we thank them for continued support and uh, service for us. So, thank you. So one of the help they also do is help us find our industry Sherpas. So our Sherpas, their role is really guide our interns to successfully finish the project. So this is, uh, this Florida Data Science for Social Good is an intensive 12-week summer internship program. So as we work on, we will, the interns will find a lot of different type of uh, Problems. Some of them will be technical nature. Some of them will be in computational nature, making the code run efficient, or some of them in visualization in nature. So there will be a lot of different technical problems. Most often, these need trial and error. So when we do it in 12 weeks, it's, we have to find the solution fast. We don't have the luxury to do the trial and error, so we want the solution. So for that, we rely on this uh, group of individuals and their experience to find the solutions quickly. Our interns essentially present the project progress on a every other week basis, and then they put forth the problems and the questions, and most often they jump in, sometimes on individual level basis as a group, to come up with a good, fast solutions to overcome the problems uh, we face. And some of them are in here, and then some of them are joined via our YouTube uh, live thing. So it's uh, Katie uh, from NLP Logic, Chad from Block Power, Jay from Dictionary.com, and uh, Victor from Jacksonville Jaguar, Andrew from Turbatory, Mary from NLP Logic, uh, 
and Harsh from Crawley and Laura from JEA. Right? And many of them have been with us for all the past six years. So again, thank you for their time and effort. So along with them, the other group of individuals who are also very key for our past years of success are our subject matter expertise. So as we're solving data science problem, we're also solving social good problem, we need subject matter expertise not only on data science side, we need the subject matter expertise on the social science side as well. So they essentially help and ensure the solutions we are coming up with are going to work in that social context, and it is going to make a difference and impact for our community partners. So this year, the group of individuals who have been helping us are uh, Besa, Dr. Besa Aslan from UN of Mathematics and Statistics, Dr. Michelle Diodo from UN of Mathematics and Statistics, Dr. Duman from Political Science, Dr. Fisak from UCF, Dr. Gold from Business IIT in UNF, and Dr. Ayan Ong from Fagler College, and then we have Zudong Lu uh, from UNF Computing, and Amanda Pascal from uh, Co College of Education, and Dr. Gordon Ratika from Anthropology, and Dr. Sandeep Brediwari from UNF Computing, and then Dr. Christy Sweeney from UNF Sports Management. So uh, again, they also meet along with our industry Sharpas on every other week basis. And finally, we would like also to do a special thanks to Dr. Mike Bender from UNF Political Science Department. So for uh, one of the projects, you guys will soon see, for the League of Women Orders Project, we need data set for that. So Dr. Mike Bender have access to a lot of voting data, and when we reached out to him, and he gave us access to the data. Without that, we could not have worked on that project. So very big thanks for him to giving access to critical data that we needed. All right, so the main reason now why we all of us are here. So we essentially have six interns who have been working with us for past uh, three months. And they all have grown quite a lot in the last three months. And soon enough, you will get, uh, will get to see the results of it. So first, I'd like to introduce, and you guys will soon see, Mahmoud. So he is an undergraduate data science student. is moving from junior to senior stage. So he will be soon looking for internship and full-time opportunities so that he will be a data scientist professional soon enough. And then we have Brian, he is a master's data science student from East West Florida. He just graduated and he has lined up an internship with the CXS, so you will be soon starting with them. And then we have Sarah Milligan, so she's not in here, she's joining us via Zoom today. She is a doctoral student in psychology in University of South Florida. She, I think, has almost one more year left out, and she has been debating between whether she wants to go into academic career or more of an industry research side of the uh, disciplines. And then we have Abhishek. He is a University of South Florida business analytics student. He got a few more semesters to finish up, and then after that, he'll be looking for full-time and internships with the data science type of positions. And then we have Aditya Ranganathan. He is also a USF business analytics student. He's just graduated. He has some few offers in his hand, and he's trying to figure out which one to pick. Right. So, and then we have Meenakshi Sharma, she's a Master's of Public Health student. She, she will also has a few more semesters of coursework left, and she will be looking for a job in healthcare with data and statistics uh, type of uh, job discipline. So let's uh, give them all big hands, and we'll soon... <laughs> we'll be hearing from them. So while these uh, individuals have been working in the internship program, there's a few more things we want to share. So we've been doing this program for past six years. Our first program was in 2017. And one of the things that GetGo we wanted to do is we want to make it a multidisciplinary program. We wanted data science students, statistics students, IT students work along uh, with uh, psychology and uh, uh, political science and other uh, non-STEM discipline as well. So as you can see, in the past six years, including this year, we have worked with 44 students, and then 17 of them are from the social science discipline. 
And while from the project side, while majority of our projects are from Duval County, you can see for the past six years, we have worked with 21 different projects, uh, while we have only a few other projects from other parts of the Florida counties. But keeping to the name true, Florida Data Science for Social Good, all of our projects that we have worked are around and impacting state of Florida. So as you can see, we do want to reach out to other parts of the state in here. So if anyone have the network to reach out to our nonprofits and other public sector organization across our state, uh, please do reach out to us after the event. So apart from the uh, internship type of activities, uh, as part of our program, we also been trying to work kind of more of a longitudinal nature of the projects, and we work on these uh, through in fall and the spring kind of semesters. So for this year, we've been working with Abijax. So their question is really, Abijax provides affordable homes. So what is really the impact to the families who are receiving affordable homes, and particularly when they've been living in that home for a long term? So we have been uh, interviewing a few of the uh, homeowners, and we have been uh, collecting data on the impact of home ownership on their education, on their employment, on their wealth building, and on their health aspects. So Dr. Tess Chosan from Public Health has been leading this effort with us. And uh, Athelene and Barani from Computing, those students have been helping us come up with the research plan, develop the interview guide, whereas the other students from Public Health, Jacob, Kelly, and Darlene, has been helping us conducting the interview and doing the data collection. We just want to let you guys know that we are just not an internship program. That's the reason for this slide, but we are not going to talk about this project today. These are the three projects we're going to talk about, Cathedral Arts Project, uh, Game Face Project, and League Project. So, but since not only the interns work hard on these projects, Dan and I also work hard on this project, before we let them speak, we will let you know what exactly is the Data Science for Social Good program. Uh, for that, I would like Dan to continue. So um, I know many of you may have noticed that uh, data is becoming a much more integrated part of our everyday life. Um, in many cases, your refrigerator is collecting data on you. Um, so um, as we see this revolution uh, happening, there's more and more need and more and more demand for people to be um, facile, right, uh, with, with dealing with data and understanding it, looking for patterns. Uh, and there's also a great opportunity for us to use this data to impact uh, the human well-being. And uh, that's part of uh, what we do in data science is not just um, looking at, you know, data about uh, maybe social media posts, but really dealing with the, the human condition and, and seeing all the data that's available for that. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> yes. That was uh, that was what I was talking about. So there, uh, we uh, help our students understand, right? What is this new field? Uh, we help them see the, the the power of this new area, and realize that um, there are uh, many opportunities in the future for our data scientists to be uh, involved in their society, in their world. Um, yes. Next slide. So, what is data science for social good? We can have data science, but how does the social good component come into this? And so uh, these programs uh, were started uh, th with this name uh, and focus in 2013 at University of Chicago, and they've really blossomed over the years. So more and more programs are coming up at different universities. And um, the, the key here is that these programs um, work with um, nonprofit sector or public uh, sector data. Uh, so data that has some sort of uh, you know, social impact. And they uh, work with the data, formulate a plan, do some analysis, and then the ultimate goal is to improve the decision-making, uh, improve data-driven decision-making about the social issues that we face. And as you uh, are probably aware, many of you work in this field, uh, you're aware that uh, any kind of social issue that we deal with is multidisciplinary. There's not one discipline that is going to have a, you know, a command of every, know everything that's going on uh, for these social issues. So uh, this kind of approach is definitely a multidisciplinary approach, and we take that here at um, uh, Florida DSSG. 
So that's data science for social good. Uh, what are we doing? Uh, so we want to focus uh, specifically um, uh, on the nonprofit sector and those uh, public organizations. Um, a lot of data science work is being done in the for-profit sector, and so we want to support those nonprofit organizations for you know uh, having access to uh, these kinds of uh, technical skills, so that they can uh, make these uh, gain these actionable insights. But one of the keys here is uh, training data scientists with a social conscience, right? And uh, at Florida DSSG, we call this, uh, that we say that we are social trustees of knowledge. And we explain that to students that uh, we've been gifted with uh, this uh, education, a wonderful education. And so we want to provide back to that community that helped us and supported us. And so in whatever ways that we can, we can use those skills to support them. So that's uh, how we do our work. So DSSG programs, as I said, have become uh, quite popular. Uh, there you can see many different universities, uh, University of Virginia, Stanford, University of Washington. And in fact, over the last couple of years, we've worked with these different partners to develop a roadmap for data science for social good programs. And it's now published as, an, uh, as a book, as an electronic book. And uh, this was spearheaded by University of Washington, but we uh, worked together and collaborated with them and have done workshops to support um, other universities and other programs that want to develop, just giving them some insights about what things to do, how to look for these things, um, how to uh, structure the programs and support the programs. So uh, this year's uh, Florida Data Science for Social Good program was supported by the FIS Computing Distinguished Professor uh, uh, Award, Professorship Award, and uh, also uh, this was sponsored uh, this event was sponsored by InnoPLogic, so we thank them for their uh, generous efforts. Thank you. So next, uh, we'd like to have a few people address you and talk a bit about how uh, they have supported uh, the Data Science for Social Good program. And so I'd first like to invite uh, Dr. Sharif Efoyumi at School of Computing. So we would like the guest speakers to join this way. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Wow, too much light. So when Karthik and Dan asked me to speak, which I did before in uh, previous rounds, I thought that every time we listen to people who overlap each other, talk about the same things, so I decided this time to talk about myself. So hopefully no one will talk about me from the rest of the speakers. And since I'm talking about me, two minutes is not enough. So I asked them for 15 minutes. They never replied, but I'm assuming that's say yes. <laughs> All right, it would be a remiss, I guess, to be here in the sixth round and not talk about what I think made this program really great. This is, in my view, one of the few unique programs in Northeast Florida, where public and private entities come together, where businesses and uh, public institutions try to help nonprofits. So I thought that there are many good things in this program here that I would like to perhaps reflect on how I see them. The success of the program, obviously, uh, depends on good students, and we have plenty of. They learn new things. Every year we have a new cohort. Depends on good faculty that lead that effort and UNF, we have plenty of those too. Depends on Northeast Florida organizations that would entrust UNF on their problems and our students, because again, they make an investment. They spend the time working with our students, working with our faculty to help them solve those problems. And last is the Jacksonville and Northeast Florida IT sector. Again, uh, we have heard the Jaguars, we have heard the NLP logics, uh, JEA was also on the list, and I'm sure many others have contributed as well. So all these four corners are really important for the success of the project. I wanna single out these two gentlemen here. I know it, like we spend a good one hour, one hour and a half every year talking about what the project did uh, produce, students and data and results and so forth. But uh, what you don't get to see, or everyone doesn't get to see, is how much effort they put into this. I bet you they already have a timeline for next year. They already do. 
they will start opening uh, call for proposals for people to submit proposals. What you also don't know is the work that they are doing here is not part of their job. It's not part of their job description. When both are evaluated and at the end of the year, this hardly makes it into their evaluations. They are teaching, they are researching, they are doing service, and they are doing excellent in all of the three. But this is above and beyond. What's also impressive is they pretty much generate the funding that's needed to run the program. You saw the FIS, Distinguished Professorship in Computing. This is something that Kartik was awarded for the past four years. And while many would use the money that is generated by that endowed professorship to perhaps uh, get uh, a salary supplement or buy a piece of equipment or travel to a conference, Kartik had been spending that money, most of it, on the students in this program to make sure that the program is live and continues to work. When they thought about the project six years ago, I thought it's a great effort. I would really like to see ways of supporting it because it's gonna be like for one year or two years. And I was expecting them to run out. To my surprise, it didn't happen. So you know that in businesses you say, well, you wish your good employees don't win the lottery. I really wish that they both win the lottery because if they do, they're gonna continue doing the program and they're gonna spend money of what they earn it from that lottery on the program. I'm really very proud of being a colleague to both of them. I'm really very proud of being a part of Northeast Florida because again, it's not really easy for the, those three parties to come together. I did not use 15 minutes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. So next we have uh, Dr. Kaveri Subraman Subramanian, Subramaniam, excuse me. <laughs> Got it. Sure. Thank you. Yes. She's the Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, yes. So good evening. I want to thank Dr. Umapati and Dr. Rishad for inviting me today. So this is my fourth week on the job and this is literally the first time I'm meeting students, so I'm excited about that. I don't have the humorous story, you know, I don't have that background of supporting uh, this project, but I believe very strongly in, in what it's seeking to accomplish. So I thought I would just share some of my thoughts about it. Um, so as I said, it's also my first time at the big reveal, and I'm really eager to hear the results of your project. So first of all, I do want to congratulate all the students here for seeking out and completing the internship. I'm sure you are aware of this, and, you will, and we've already heard, but this is truly a unique, cutting-edge, experiential learning opportunity that you participated in. So my reflections, right? So we are faced today with complex social issues that are contributing to disparities in health and civic participation and criminal justice across the U.S., it has become clear that tackling these complex problems require new and innovative approaches that can leverage the data revolution that is taking place around us. We have also come to realize that an education focused on a single discipline does not adequately prepare students for the challenges of the 21st century. I'm reminded a little bit about what Albert Einstein wrote. All religion, arts, and sciences are branches of the same tree. And to that end, scholars have been recommending that we adopt an educational approach that integrates different disciplines and that provides experiential learning opportunities. Collaborating with community partners to tackle an important social issue is a transformative learning opportunity. And I will say this was one of the things that really attracted me to UNF. The Florida Data Science for Social Good has all these innovative elements. Working in an interdisciplinary team and, and learning to look at an issue from a disciplinary lens other than yours is great preparation for the world of work that I know some of you are already preparing for. The soft skills of teamwork, collaboration, and oral and visual communication skills that you gained from this internship will also be invaluable to you. Finally, and most importantly, the relationships you formed with your program directors, faculty mentors, industry Sherpas, peers and community partners will be a part of the network of resources you can draw on as you enter the workforce. 
These are the learning opportunities that really make for a wonderfully rich and exciting, edu memorable uh, educational experience. I want to applaud the program faculty, the project partners, and the data science Sherpas who made it possible, and of course, the funding uh, support of the funding partners as well. Congratulations again, and I wish you all the best in your future endeavors, and I'm really looking forward to hearing your results. Thank you. So um, in order to uh, get this work done, we do need to uh, work with partners, and um, uh, one central partner, uh, one, one uh, very close partner <laughs> in this work has been the Nonprofit Center of Northeast Florida, and um, Deidre O'Connor is going to be here to tell us uh, about that. Excuse me, Deidre O'Connor, yeah. Thank you so much, and I could not agree more. Um, Karthik and Dan, thank you for making our community's uh, health and um, wellness a priority. And uh, hey, everyone, I'm Deirdre Connor from the Nonprofit Center. I'm really thrilled to be here today. Actually, coming to Data Science for Social Good's first big reveal was one of the first things that I did when I started at the Nonprofit Center. And I remember leaving being completely blown away by um, the work that was done over the short period of time. And six years later, I'm really excited about what's happened with so many of the organizations that have participated in Data Science for Social Good over the years. And so we're really, really proud and excited to see how far this program has come and the type of impact that it's had on the sector. Because we know from the research that um, organizations that can demonstrate their impact are more likely to be successful in the work that they do, in gaining the resources that they need for their work. And we've seen that manifest in the organizations that have participated. Really thrilled to hear more about today's projects and, um, and to see the work of all of our members kind of coming through in the projects that we're gonna see tonight. Um, and then finally, I just wanna encourage all of you, if you're not already connected with an organization, if you want to be, um, reach out to me or to Karthik and Dan and, um, we, we need you, the students, we need um, really everyone at the table when it comes to a strong community. And really that's what all of our 1,300 nonprofits in Northeast Florida are doing is solving some of our community's most significant challenges. So um, thank you to the students, thank you to UNF for making this possible, and thank you especially to Karthik and Dan. Thank you. Yeah, so next, we're going to hear from uh, Ari, and he's uh, one of our board members. We thought he's been with us from the beginning. Remember that first meeting in the, in the conference room, and uh, it was really great. He was very encouraging and supporting of our program, so we appreciate him. Yeah, yeah thank you, Dan, Karthik. This has been really cool. I can't believe when you said six years. I mean, that feels like ages ago, and I feel like I say this every year, but six years really feels like a lot, and it's amazing all the work that you've done to to get us to this point and everybody else that's been involved and the Sherpas that have been you know, here every year or just this past year, the, the work's been awesome. And I'm really excited to see what the, the students have to say today. I mean, congratulations in advance. You're not quite out of the woods yet, but um, I'm sure it'll be really great. Um, and you know, just in terms of, as a, a member of the Jaguars, you know, we are only as strong as the community is where we wouldn't be the Jaguars without the, the Jacksonville community. So any way that we can support um, and help is really valuable to us. And as a, a person who's involved you know, with data and how we use it at the Jaguars and how much success we've had with data, um, it's awesome to be able to you know, lend those skills, those resources out to the community so that that same sort of insight that's so valuable to how we do our business um, can be used by so many others. So. Um, once again, thanks to everybody for all the work that you're doing. Really cool. Um, excited for today. Thanks, Ari. Uh, so next is up is Matt, and Matt has also been there since the since the beginning, um, and we appreciate his support. Yes, thank you. And I borrowed a few of my minutes to Sharif, so I, I can't quite take the full the full allotment, but I'll, I'll be quick anyway, I promise. Uh, just two things to say. One is um, this program kind of intersects something that's really important in NLP logics. One is data science. Uh, if you don't know that, that that's what, what we do and what we love, and also community. And so we're very honored to sponsor. We're very honored to be part of this program since the beginning. Um, so thank you for that opportunity. 
And then second thank you is, is just everybody who's online and everybody who came here today to support this. Uh, that is important. Uh, obviously, we could be you know, having dinner, probably cutting into some family time. So just appreciate everybody that came here today to show your support. So thank you. Thanks, Mike. So we will hear from uh, Dr. John Kantner. He's the uh, Associate uh, Provost and Vice President for Research at UNF. Well, this is great. I, I realize I'm the last person in between uh, the presentations and uh, getting to hear about these, these great projects. So I've been at UNF for several years now, having spent the first part of my career at other institutions. One of the reasons I came to UNF was because of how clearly embedded the university is in the fabric of the community. I think this is uh, sort of best encapsulated by the fact that the Carnegie Foundation has recognized UNF as a community-engaged university. So you might ask, what does that mean? Well, uh, we do have data about that. We actually collect data about that. And it so it means a couple of things, just a couple of examples. So if we know uh, that about half or close to half of our courses actually are flagged in our systems as, as having a community-engaged component, which means that the faculty and the students are actually involved in some way in trying to contribute back to the Northeast Florida community. We also know, because I had to collect this data as one of my job responsibilities, um, that uh, the majority of the research the faculty and students are involved in also is directly engaged in uh, the Northeast Florida community. But really, it's projects like this which I think uh, present the best example of the, of the kind of community engagement that the University of North Florida is involved in. The, the, the um, Data Science for Social Good uh, project, um, I had the privilege of being able to meet with the interns earlier uh, this summer uh, online, but got a chance to talk to them for, for about 30 minutes. And I shared with them that prior to coming to the University of North Florida, I actually was effectively the chief operating officer of a nonprofit research institute. And one of my responsibilities, of course, was to try to make sure that the institution was making good decisions, and particularly because our donors, our sponsors, the public that was, that was observing what we were doing was very interested to know that we were doing good with the resources that we were provided. We actually were over 100 years old, that institution, and we had a lot of data, tons of data. But as I think many people here know, when you work in a nonprofit, there just is not the time to be able to dive into that data and to really understand it. I could have done it in my spare time, but really my spare time was actually still committed to doing the kinds of programming that we were doing at that, at that uh, organization. I so wish that I could have had this kind of resource available uh, at that time to help me try to understand my data better, make sure I was doing the best uh, stewardship of donor money and, and, uh, and the best programs possible. 